Hi, I'm Michelle and welcome to Michelle James Designs. This is another how-to video in my series to show you guys how to create fun crafts, decor, cards, and more. So this week is mason jar week and I love mason jars and I love mason jar gifts. Um, you can find quite a few of them on my blog. If you want to check it out, you can just search for mason jar projects or just mason jars. Uh, this time I'm trying out a new painting technique and it's with a product that I've never used before and I want to create a Valentine mason jar gift. So it's a marbling paint technique and it's supposed to be pretty dang amazing. So you and I were going to find out together because I've not done this before. So what you're going to need to complete this project, if you want to follow along, is a mason jar. I'm using this kind. It's the marbling medium, which I got at Michael's. It's by Martha Stewart. Craft paint. I'm going to be using teal, pink, and white. Some super fun glitter. Some charms, and you'll see why in the tutorial. Um, baker's twine. I'm using pink and teal. White cardstock and a printer, so you can print the tag. Um, scrap vinyl or contact paper so we can mask the area on the jar that we're not going to want paint on. And then a silhouette or a Cricut, whatever cutting machine to cut out some vinyl hearts. So we'll need vinyl for the hearts as well. Um, I'm going to we'll be working over a little tin or a cookie sheet or something to keep the mess to a minimum. Um, and then I'll probably be wearing gloves. And then the last thing is we need something to keep our jar upside down overnight while it's dripping and drying and, and everything. So I've kind of rigged up this old mug that we, I don't even know why we still have it, because it's broken. But, and I, this is a cardboard tube from a vinyl roll that, is, that I've used, and it's very sturdy. So I can set this on top like this and it can dry over my cookie sheet or whatever I'm using. Okay, so those are the supplies that we're gonna use. So I'm really excited to get started. I hope this comes out nice. All right, let's get going. <laughs> Okay, so we have our cookie sheet here with our parchment paper. And then I also have three paper cups with the stir sticks in them to mix the paint. So now I'm mixing the pink paint and what it is is one part paint to two parts of the marble medium. And I'm just eyeballing this, I am not measuring anything and it came out fine so I don't think that you have to be very precise. Just going to shake that up a little bit. It looks it was kind of gloppity. Okay, so it says on the instructions of the marble medium to slowly stir it. So this is, I'm not speeding up the video at all during this part, I just wanted you to see how fast or slow I was stirring my paint. And I just stirred it until I couldn't see the white medium anymore, until it was all mixed in. looks good. So now I'm going to move on to the teal paint. I did speed this up because I don't think you guys need to watch that in slow motion or regular time. <laughs> Real time. And the white. And you could really, I could distinct between the white and the medium, even though 
the medium is just a little bit creamier than the actual white. Okay, so now we're going to start the jar. Here it is all masked off, ready to go. And so we're just going to take the paint. And I'm just going to pour some on there. I was kind of scared to pour too much at first, so I just started with a little bit. This is one of those projects where if you don't know what you're doing, you just kind of have to get used to it and dive in there. I like to kind of dive in slowly, <laughs> put my toe in maybe, <laughs> instead of dive. I'm gonna get the third color here, the teal, and add some of that in and see what happens. All right, so it's dripping down the sides and I kind of want it to go the other way. I want it to go up and down instead of sideways. So I'm just going to try to keep my jar more vertical. And as it drips down into the other colors, it does start to marble. It's kind of cool. I think you guys would love this. And just keep varying and mixing your colors and adding it to the parts where the jar is um, clear. So I can see on this side there's a lot of clear space right there at the top. I'm just going to add a little teal. And just keep going until your jar is completely painted. And I did use the stir stick sometimes to kind of spread the paint a little bit over the smaller areas that weren't being covered. It's a little messy though. You can see all the drips on the parchment paper, so be sure you cover your workspace. And then once it's all covered, it looks so cool. Then I was just needing to hang it upside down and I and, and I didn't want the bottoms to touch because I wanted it to be able to drip off so then I got my mug with my my tube in there and put it on there but I ended up moving it from that because that actually fell over it was too top heavy with the jar so what I did was take a one of the green plastic or paper cups and I turned it upside down and I just placed the jar on top of that and it didn't hit the ground it was above the ground the table so it still was able to drip down so overnight this is the next day and now we can remove the masking which is always fun so I just took a, a razor blade single blade single edge blade craft knife would work too and just kind of scored and cut all the way around that vinyl okay then you can remove the vinyl it's pretty sticky which is good for when you're using vinyl and for masking because you don't want it to go underneath although this one did we'll see that in a second and there's my paint underneath but the good thing about that was it was still wet it did not dry overnight because it was underneath the vinyl so it was easy to clean up and so I anticipated that thinking that was probably going to happen 
So I have a paper towel ready over here to wipe off the excess. This is just a dry paper towel. But then I used a wet paper towel as well, just to really clean it off even more. And it really turned out nice. There's a nice clean edge. And I love the way the paint looks. So once you get that part done, now you can start decorating. So these are my hearts that I'm cutting out of the Cricut. And I have them on the mat this way on the screen, the software, so that when I place my vinyl onto my mat, I can put it in the different corners or places and have cut all the colors at once. So I'm doing another marbling project at the same time so that's why I've got red and black on here. But for this jar I'm using the pink and the teal and the white. But this is just a great way to be able to cut all at once, one time, you don't have to keep putting a different color of a vinyl on your mat and cutting, and then a different color, and then cutting again, and then a different color, and cutting again. I like to do it all at once. Now it's ready to cut out. Okay, so I have my hearts cut out now, and there's my jar. And I'm just gonna place these hearts around, along that edge of the paint. I just wanted something decorative there. Kind of spice it up a little bit. So I'm just taking the heart, this pink one. It looks red in the video, but it's pink and it's glittery and it's very pretty. All the vinyl that I'm using is from Style Tech Craft and they have amazing vinyl. So I'm just varying the sizes and alternating the colors and working my way around the jar. There we go. It looks so pretty. I think it adds to it. Okay, so now we have uh, the tags and this is a download for you guys. You can um, download and the link is on the blog post at michellejdesigns.com and I will put a link to the blog post um, in the comments on YouTube. So we need to trim, there's six on the page, so we need to just cut out one for today. And the size is two and a quarter wide by four inches long. And I love this paper trimmer, it's by Cutter B, but I think there's a nice Fiskars version of it that I have in my Amazon store if you wanna check that out. And we're just getting the four inches. There we go. And I did, after I put the, the glitter on, I did put a hole at the top of that. I didn't show that in the video. Okay, so now we're gonna add some glitter. And this is um, extra fine glitter that I got at Michael's. And I just have a little cardstock underneath it to capture the extra. 
But first I'm gonna use my liquid glue and add some to each of the little pink hearts. And I'm just gonna sprinkle on a little glitter. It's hard to tell, it's hard to see in the video, but it's there, it's very pretty. And then I'm just gonna kind of tap off the extra. And there it is. So now we can add our Baker's Twine. So I just have pink and teal, and I'm um, just wrapping it a couple times around the jar. And just tying uh, the first part of a square knot here. Then with two of the strings, or one side, I'm gonna add my tag. And tie the rest of the knot. Then I want just one of these strings and I'm going to add my BFF charm. These charms are from Michaels and they're all about friends. They're really cute. So I'm gonna add that on there just as a little extra touch. I thought it was really fun. So grab the other strings, get them back to where you can tie another knot. So cute. Alright, now a gift isn't a gift without some candy. Oh, but first I'm gonna trim these, sorry. <laughs> Alright. Now I can add my Smarties or any candy that you want. I like to put something wrapped in it though so they don't get just a jar full of plain unwrapped candy. So I cut out a vinyl circle and then I had some extra hearts left over so I used those on the top to decorate the lid. And I think it looks so fun and festive for Valentine's Day. And now I want to show you guys the stemless wine glass that I did with the same marbling technique. This is a wine glass from the Dollar Tree. And then I got this can of wine, which I've never seen before. I think it's so cute. And then the marbling effect is at the bottom and I used red, white, and black, and then the red, white, and black hearts. And there you go, such a fun project. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to my channel. See you next time.